Quantum GIS Intro Part 14 Symbolization of Vector Layers Let's add a few vector layers. Here's Railways and this is in a Unicode UTF-8 character set. You can see by opening the attribute table that the characters were respected. Let's add a few more in different encodings and you'll see that Quantum GIS is very good at handling different character sets. So that was GBK, both simplified and traditional. Those are showing up fine. In combination, the same project with Unicode UTF-8. Similarly, I could add Big Five characters, which is the Taiwan traditional Chinese character data encoding and I've added Taiwan population which showed up in the right place because my project properties is set up for a WGS84 global projection and the transformation on the fly has been checked. So let's put the railways on top and you can see them now. Another way of dealing with symbolization is to boost contrast by adding a second layer. So let's add another railways layer to this project. Railways, open, okay. So now I've added a second layer. You can move it underneath the first and we could change its color by right click properties and we can go in to change its color. Let's try giving it a dark color and make it a thicker line, say 0.8. Say OK. And now, oh, it's not quite thick enough. I'll try thickening that. How about 1.5 or just 2? So now you can see that we had a darker color below and a lighter color on top. The contrast isn't quite enough for me, so I'll go to the top layer and change that to a very bright color like white. Okay. So now you can see how we've sort of managed to boost the visual impact of one layer by simply doubling it and putting a different contrast layer that's thicker underneath the first. I'll turn that off to give you an idea of what it's like without the second layer. Turn it back on. That's just one way of making symbols more visually attractive. Now we could change the polygons for China into boundaries only by going to properties and using the wrench change where we've got all these symbol adjustment possibilities. Here's the fill style and color. We could change it to no brush where it'll be boundary only. Then we could change the boundary color to blue. Pick a blue. Make it a little thicker. and put that on our map. So we've eliminated the fill color and we should just have boundaries with the railways showing on top. We could also label those. There's the label tab, display labels. Let's go ahead and give it the Chinese name in simplified characters and we could adjust the font here, make sure that it's a, a font that can symbolize Chinese well enough. In Macintosh it's okay, but in Windows you may have to pick, pick like Arial, Unicode, or something like that. I'll probably boost the size so I can see it. Okay. So now I've added the 
labels to the provinces of China and those should appear in a second there they are one problem you can see is that it will label every uh, every part of every polygon so that's sort of something that's not so good let's go ahead and turn that off properties take those labels off okay and those will remove themselves and we will move on to the Taiwan part okay so let's zoom into Taiwan right here and you can see the railway symbolized on top of the districts of Taiwan right click on Taiwan go to properties In this case under style we want to show a graduated symbol based on the population 2000 values we can choose an existing color set or we can create a new ramp if we want I just made a yellow to red one we can use green to red now in quantum you have to assign the class number and the mode like quantiles and then hit classify in order to actually load the values you can change the label to simplify the way it reads on your legend which is useful and you can go ahead and hit OK now it's been symbolized so you can see the, the population density which is red is concentrated along the western side of Taiwan. So that's an introduction to symbolization and I hope you have fun with it.